So your lawnmower won't start. Whether you're mechanically inclined or not, I'm going to show you steps to get it up and going and back to mowing lawns. This is a typical lawnmower. This is a Briggs & Stratton, but it doesn't matter if it's a Honda, Tecumseh, Kohler, um, or the off-brands that are essentially just all Honda clones. Cub Cadet, stuff like that. They're all just clones of a Honda engine. First thing we need to do, the very first major problem that all of these have, the reason they won't start, is fuel related. And so we're going to dive right into the fuel system and drain out any water that is accumulated in the ethanol fuels that we are forced to use these days. So if it's a Honda or something like that, generally the carburetor is going to be on this side. This Briggs is tucked over here. And so we're just going to crawl over to the carburetor and loosen the bowl nut on the bottom and drain out any garbage. So on this particular engine, I have some air filter housings and stuff on here, but I do not have to remove those. And most of the times you don't on these lawnmowers and stuff, you don't actually have to remove any of this stuff because you can see everything through a hole or passage. I'm just doing it so you guys can see it better for video. Now on this Briggs and & Stratton, there's one bowl on the bottom. If you have a Honda or Honda clone or something like that, you'll actually have two nuts on the bottom of the carburetor bowl. And the one that's cocked at an angle is actually designed just for this, just to drain out any bad fuel. So all there is is just a nut right in the bottom. We're just gonna take socket and we're just gonna loosen it off. I'm gonna catch, I'm gonna see if I can catch it just to uh, show you what comes out, just to see if we have water or something else coming out of the system. And we just let it drain for a second. It's just gonna, cause what happens is the, uh, the water, the ethanol pulls water into the fuel and it mixes with it. But after time it over concentrates and the ethanol and water just settle out into the bottom. And that the lowest point in the whole fuel system is your carburetor. And then your, your system will not run. And that should be sufficient to drain any water. And then I didn't even remove the bowl nut all the way. I'm just going to tighten it back up. And we can look at it. And I do, uh, it's going to be impossible for you guys to see. There is a little bit of water in there. Um, and apparently they do have, it's a little bit of pinkish. So the person did put, the customer did put stable fuel stabilizer in like I told them to. So that's good. But I can smell the ethanol. You can always just smell ethanol. It just it just stinks compared to gasoline, just straight gasoline. So now I could just try to fire it up again and see if we can go from there. So let's see if it's that simple. And a lot of times it is. So I didn't have to remove all this stuff. We'll just put it back on. But just for fun, before I put that on, um, I'm going to actually remove, just because yeah, it's going to drive me crazy not to see inside the uh i'll pinch off the fuel line real fast just because it's going to drive me crazy not to look inside the bowl while i'm this far when i'm in this far and just see how clean or dirty the carburetor is and you can see in there that the carburetor is actually really clean if this is all dirty and gross and gunked up you're gonna have to clean your carburetor i have whole videos on virtually every carburetor out there you got to be careful that you don't you know, mess up your gaskets and stuff when you're putting this back on. Don't over tighten the bolt on the bottom. Um, we can look at our main jet real fast. This is our, the bottom bowl nut on, on Briggs and Tecumseh's and stuff like that. This is your main jet. Um, that's carburetor cleaning videos. But we can spray through this and just make sure the passages are clear. But this is so clear, this is going to be clear, but I'm going to spray through it anyway. And it's completely clear like I thought. Put that back together. I always hate starting them on my workbench, but we'll see. We'll do it. Pull this, and we'll see if that was enough. I, I primed it a few times. It's a primer-based system. So say that didn't work, and that doesn't get you going. And you think the carburetor is clean enough to that it should be starting we're going to check spark spark these days is so reliable that it's always just a, a last resort thing or thing i don't check it that often because generally a carburetor is the 
oh, first thing that goes. A couple ways you can check spark. One is first you got to make sure you uh, you hold down the bale on top that allows you to start the, the mower. So I just have a I just put a spring clamp clamp up there to hold down the bale and it disengages the the flywheel brake. So now the engine will spin over freely. Um, one way is is take the spark plug, hold it against, pull the rope over by hand. And I saw a spark. I see sparks. Second way is to take a long screwdriver or a nice rubber handle, make sure it doesn't have the metal that goes through. Plug it in to the end and just hold the shaft about, you should get a spark that jumps when it's outside of here. It should jump almost a, a quarter of an inch. That's not an easy thing to do. This is generally a two-person job. Have somebody else pull it. Well, you kind of hold the mower still, just keep your fingers from out, from underneath, and see if you have spark. And we got spark. There's also specialty tools that I like, like this. So you can check spark with. This is a. This checks the gap. This one also checks the gap to see how strong the spark is. This one just clips on in the place of a. This clips onto the metal. You plug on the spark thing, and you see a spark across there. This one. You put in line and you see a little neon bulb light up. This is probably my favorite. Um, this one just a little neon tube lights up inside. This one works fantastic for small engines. You just plug one end and you touch the other end on. This is probably my go-to. So what about if you weren't getting spark there? What do you check now? No spark? And you make sure you got your bail. You know, your bail's all the way down. Because a lot of times the, uh, the cable can stretch. And you see this one might have stretched in the past. The customer has it wrapped around backwards to get more pull on it. So over here you have the shut off switch slash brake control set up that the, I'm pulling the uh, handle bail lever right now and you can see how it pulls back. But a lot of times what will happen is it'll stretch to the point that maybe that's as far back as it pulls, but it just needs just that much more to be able to engage the, uh, the spark or to turn off the, the spark killer killer the um, the mechanism that grounds a spark so sometimes just pull the bell back and then put a pair of pliers or something on there and help you know wrench it back even more by hand and see if that's enough to actually make it regain spark and if that doesn't fix your spark chances are your ignition coil is bad now if the spark checks out good your carburetor you think is good the last thing is compression whether or not you got enough compression well chances are if it ran the last time you used it the compression's fine so if the last time you used it and you put it away last winter and now it just won't start and or you put it away last week and now it won't start chances are the compression's probably okay it is hard to actually test the compression on a small engine because it has a compression release so you can pull it over by hand so um unless it feels like it's just Free spooling, and one of the ways you can tell, like, tell that how that feels is by pulling the spark plug out and pulling it over and seeing how easy it spins over, and then put the spark plug back in when it should be building some sort of compression. And but I mean, you can even put your finger over this hole. I mean, you can hear air, you can feel whether or not there's compression. Um, you can build up temporary compression if the piston rings are really worn by putting um, about a teaspoon of just motor oil directly down the spark plug hole. Not a ton, you don't want to hydrolock it, but just a teaspoon at max um, of just motor oil, um, automatic transmission fluid works, pretty much any oil. Just tip it back, pour about a teaspoon in there, some will mess up on the side, put the spark plug back in, put that back in and try to start it. And if it starts and runs, chances are your compression is so low, but that's, those are essentially the basics to get one of these things back up and going before you're gonna to have to dive into major, more major work like a carburetor repair or something else. Those are the basic steps, virtually all lawnmowers, to, you know, and virtually all small engines. Those are the basic steps to get them all going. It's virtually always these days the fuel. Years ago, it wasn't so. We had points and stuff like that. You check spark almost first because you knew that was it. These days, it's fuel. It's the ethanol fuel just ruins everything. I'll put links to below to .org website that actually shows you where you can still get ethanol free fuel because these things love those so much better and they'll last so much longer. Um, but preventative maintenance, don't store these with any gasoline in them all. 
if you have to store them with gas, put stabilizer in them. But better not, better than like, anything else is no gas at all. Let them run dry, start them again, try to start them till no gas at all. Nothing can gum up or corrode or water really can't get introduced. That's my preferred method. Um, hopefully these tips help you out. Questions below. Love to help you guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye. Come on!